Hey, good day, and welcome back. This is the electrical meta room in the building where I live. This room contains our smart electricity meters, as well as the solar inverters for our solar system. Many of our apartments have their own solar system. Some have small systems that were installed over 11 years ago, and a number of us have upgraded to six kilowatt systems installed in the last year or two. You might have seen these headlines, which say that the price of generating electricity has fallen recently, in some cases in excess of 40%. Some of this is as a consequence of renewable electricity coming online. Solar, wind and hydro systems have a much lower generating cost than fossil fuels. But like myself, you might be saying, I don't see my power bill coming down at all. And the reason for that is we are paying the retail price for electricity, which is fixed at an agreed rate. You may not be aware that the price of electricity changes every 30 minutes. The generators of electricity, whether it be coal-fired, gas, wind, solar or hydro, all bid to sell that electricity into the market. And the price fluctuates every 30 minutes depending on demand. Sometimes it's very cheap and other times it can be very expensive. Now as retail consumers we don't see these price changes because we're on fixed price contracts and we may get a small feed-in tariff for any solar that we generate. There is however one way of taking advantage of these changes in the wholesale price and that is to sign up to get your electricity supplied by a wholesaler as long as you're prepared for the price to fluctuate every 30 minutes. So I've decided to have a trial with Amber Electric. So come with me on this roller coaster ride of wholesale electricity prices and I'll show you the time I thought it was going to cost me $30 to cook my dinner and also the time when I actually got paid to charge my Tesla. So I've cancelled my electricity contract with Origin. I was paying 35 cents per kilowatt hour plus a daily supply charge of 85 cents plus a further 21 cents for a green energy tariff and getting a feed-in tariff of 7 cents per kilowatt hour. Now I'm on a variable rate with Amber Electric. Sometimes this is very cheap, it's only a few cents per kilowatt hour. And I can also get great rates for exporting my solar. However, I need to keep an eye on the prices as sometimes it can peak to many dollars per kilowatt hour. <laughs> so hey, what could go wrong? Fortunately, in Australia, we have a facility called the Government Reference Price. Amber Electric do have a price guarantee, so that currently you never are exposed to paying more than 38 cents per kilowatt hour. And they don't mark up the wholesale price either. However, I do pay a monthly subscription fee of $19 to be part of the Amber Electric service. So for me to come out ahead, I do need to be better than $19 a month, better off. Here is an example of a fairly typical summer's day. I'm paying 28 cents per kilowatt hour for my electricity, which is much lower than the 35 I used to pay, and I'm getting 6 cents per kilowatt hour as my feed-in tariff. They're forecasting prices to drop as we get to the peak of the day, and at 11.30 they do just that. Later that evening, however, prices spike right up to 73 cents per kilowatt hour, just at dinner time. I could get 47 cents for my solar, however, it's 7.30 at night and it's basically dark. It's very normal to have long periods of normality where prices are lower than my retail option. However, every now and then you get a warning, and here's one I got at midday to say that prices would be peaking that night. Prices were forecast to peak in excess of $19 per kilowatt hour. I calculated it could cost me over $30 just to cook dinner that night, so I contemplated going over to the local bowling club. However, I remembered I was protected by the government reference price guarantee, so prices were never going to go above $0.38 cents per kilowatt hour. I decided to go to the bowling club for dinner anyway. On another occasion... Electricity prices were very low at 17 cents and I got a notification on my watch. I also realised though that the feed-in tariff had gone negative, so it was actually costing me to send my solar out to the grid. However, some quick maths told me it was about 18 cents per hour, so I just let it go. 
On another day, possible volatility was forecast, but I knew I was protected by the government reference price. Most unusual was the time when electricity prices went negative and they were actually paying me to consume electricity. I was getting a high feed-in tariff, but it was after 7pm at night again. Sometime later, however, I had the perfect opportunity where electricity prices went significantly negative and it was just during the middle of the afternoon, so it was actually a perfect time to use my electricity to charge my Tesla. I was literally getting paid to charge my car. I think eight cents per kilowatt hour is the cheapest I've been able to buy electricity for, and there must have been a lot of solar in the grid because they were charging me 12 cents to export my solar. So that's a great time to run any power hungry appliances like clothes dryers and dishwashers. The prices you pay for electricity and your feed-in tariff can vary quite remarkably, but do remember that the government reference price guarantees that you'll never pay more than 38 cents per kilowatt hour for your consumption. Amber Electric provide notifications on your phone and watch to tell you of any extreme events, good and bad. In one extreme situation where I was protected by the government reference price for my consumption, I was actually getting $3.49 per kilowatt hour for my feed-in tariff. And this was at 4pm in the afternoon, so we still had a few hours of sunlight. I took full advantage of this by turning off every appliance and exporting as much as I possibly could. Remembering we're protected against price spikes for our consumption, it's always exciting when you think you could get $12 or more for exporting solar. However, unfortunately, this typically happens late at night when there's no sunlight. I can see that adding a home battery, such as a Tesla Powerwall, would enable you to optimise this gaming you need to do to get the best out of your electricity consumption. I don't have a power wall, but I do have a Tesla with a large battery, and I usually keep that at about 60% charge, so there's always plenty of capacity if I've got excess solar that I can put into it during the day. I can see from my consumption data from Origin that I generally bump along at about 278 kilowatt hours per month of consumption. Solar, of course, peaks in the summer months of November, December, January, February, and that offsets my general consumption by bringing it down to about 150 kilowatt hours per month. The Amber app displays the data from my smart meter and it shows I had a few energy intensive days at the start of the cycle. And then I tend to bump along at about 6 or 7 kilowatt hours per day. There was a period from the 12th to the 20th of March where I was away from home and the 1 to 2 kilowatt hours per day is things like the refrigerator, television and standby appliances. So after a solid 30 days, I'm recording $29.56 of consumption. My old Origin retail account could be $270 per quarter, so at this stage it looks like I'm way ahead. But we still have two months to go before I get my first bill from Amber Electric, so please subscribe now and check back, and I'll give you an update at the end of the quarter. Cheers, thanks for watching. G'day and welcome to Steve's Tesla. This is my channel dedicated to electric vehicles and renewable energy. Subscribe now and let's drive.